we were presented with the idea of cross-promotion for our podcast. It's a great way to boost the listenership of your podcast, and we're 100% in. So each week, we intend to start the podcast with our podcast cross-promotion. A quick shout-out to Gareth over at the Mindset Podcast. Thank you for this idea. Our podcast cross promotions of the week. Here we go. Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be around this wild, wacky, and sometimes disturbing world of ours. Yes, that's the intro to the Mindset Podcast, a weekly attempt to open eyes and shedding light on what's really going on in the world, all done by ripping apart the media madness that masquerades as news. Join me, Gareth Davis, every Sunday on the Mindset Podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting services such as iTunes, Stitcher, and so on. Or you can go directly to the main Mindset website. That's www.mindsetcentral.com. Check out the Mindset Podcast. Bring your curiosity, your opinions, and a sense of humor. And remember that some worldviews are stranger than others. So if you'd like to cross-promote with us, hit us up at podcast at deadamerica.website. Early in our life, we start forming habits. Sometimes the habits that we form are not good habits. And later in life, we come to a point where we want to change our habits. Well, changing habits can get very difficult, and sometimes we need help finding that right mix to change us. Our guest today, Alex Sorensen, from EasierHabits.com, is here just to do that with us. Let's talk a little bit about changing our habits with Alec. Let's get into this. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. Alec, could you please introduce yourself and let our listeners know a little bit about you and your background? Sure. I'm a lifestyle design coach for work from home dads. And what that means is I help people break down big life changes that they want to make into small manageable habits that can build up over time so they can make those changes with confidence. Um, I have certainly experienced lots of big life changes in my own life. I've um, I graduated in 2008 with the, the big recession and switched from being an English major to a programmer. I went back to school at one point. After I got married, my wife and I decided to switch roles, and I went from being the primary provider to a stay-at-home dad in the remote mountains of Japan for a little while. And um, we've come back since then and did run a few more career experiments. Right now, we are both working part-time, staying with the kids part-time, so we can have uh, the balance that we're looking for both in our professional lives and in our family. So um, that's the kind of thing I help other people do, as well as uh, breaking into their passions, finding time to do the things that really rejuvenate you, uh, and taking care of your health. So what got you thinking about helping people change themselves like this? 
Well, um, so a lot of it comes from my experience in Japan, where I really figured out for the first time that very small daily activities can have a huge impact on your day. Um, namely, when I went to Japan, I was so allergic that I could barely breathe in our little condo that we had. And um and I got medicine for that right off the bat, but I knew that if I wanted to live in Japan, I would I, I wouldn't want to be a medicine the whole time to like control my mold allergies. Uh, so I just started doing a whole bunch of research on um, uh, what are things you can do to reduce your allergies. My whole life, I just accepted the fact that I had allergies and there wasn't much I could do about it except for medicine. And then I realized there's a whole lot of research on all sorts of things you could do. And so I tried a bunch and some didn't really pan out. Drinking more water, for instance, is always generally good for you, but I didn't notice any particular reduction in my allergies or ability to breathe when I wasn't on medicine. So uh, I tried a bunch of things out until basically 10 minutes of yoga a day uh, allowed me to uh, clear my allergies out. Uh, it helped with my back problems. It helped uh, wake me up for several hours. And we were in this like small blizzarding mountain town in January where it was cold all the time. Japanese apartments are not centrally heated. Um, and so, and there wasn't very well insulated windows. So it was cold. But like when I did some yoga, got the blood flowing for several hours, I didn't worry about the cold. I didn't really feel it so much. And so that was like when I realized small changes changes um, enable really big changes like living in Japan, right? If I, if I couldn't find a way to breathe in our apartment, uh, it wouldn't be very easy to live there. And so that, was, that got me going um, along that path. I was at the time uh, trying to be an entrepreneur as well as stay-at-home dad. I went back to being a full-time coder for a while, and I just found it eventually like unsatisfying um, I like a lot of aspects of coding. I was working in the education space, so I believed in the products we were putting out. But I personally wasn't helping people transform their lives as much as I felt I could. And that's when I started to make the shift from uh, coding. And at, at the time, I was doing some training in-house at the company to uh, being a full-time coach for myself or part-time coach for myself, I should say. So let's follow up with that a little bit. How important is healthy living to improve our daily routine? Um, so for me, there's, a, there's kind of a process if you want to make a big change. And, and the healthy living part is number two in that process. The first thing is just getting clarity on what kind of changes you want to make in your life. What kind of life do you want to have? And I think a lot of people, when they look at that, will realize, well, like, being tired all the time doesn't jive with my goals. I'm going to need to have more energy or uh, I'm going to need to be more focused or more organized. And those are the kinds of things you kind of get to in step two, which is building capacity. You try out the things you want to do um, or um, you try out some of those habits like the, the yoga that will enable you to be functional in the way you want to be functional. And you just experiment with some. And I think where a lot of people go wrong in healthy living in particular is that um, they hear one they have one idea for how to be healthy like go to the gym or something like that or hear one a piece of advice on on a blog they try it out it doesn't work for them and they quit um, and and really the key there the healthy living that enables you to do what it is you want to do with your life is just experimenting with small habits, 10 minute increments until you find something that actually has a noticeable effect that's motivating because you can see the results rather than, um, you know, trying to do healthy li living out of discipline um, because the habit doesn't work for you. So, um, so yeah, and I think that that's really crucial. And once you start building that capacity of, of healthy living, that will start opening up hours of your day to be more effective. And that's where you start to make the bigger transformations. So how can we start this process of introducing healthy habits to begin our day in the first place? Uh, it's really knowing what result you want. Um, so there are times in my life where, like in college, for example, where I felt I should be more organized, and, but I didn't really define it. Um, and so I would, I even designed my own planner um, and I'd stick with it for like a few weeks and then quit because it wasn't really helping me. It just felt like busy work to like fill out what I was doing in the planner. And I was doing just fine you know, getting my assignments in last minute. 
Um, and I, I didn't really define what it was I wanted. And there's all sorts of things I could have wanted, like looking back, for example, um, you know, if I found myself um, not hanging out with friends because I was going to do homework, but then procrastinating doing the homework. So I was really like doing nothing in an afternoon. Like that is a problem I could have solved. And um, you could have solved that in any number of ways. You could have solved it by being more organized and getting down to homework earlier. You could also solve the same problem by just knowing that you're not going to get to your homework before, you know, 8 p.m. that night and go hang out with friends. Like it's, it's when you know what change you actually want to make that you start to see those options. And then when you try things out, those habits make sense, right? They either do solve your problem or they don't. Right. If you feel like you should go to the gym to be healthy in general, you're going to go to the gym. You're not going to know what results you're looking for. It's not going to feel like anything's getting done and you're going to quit that. Right. But if you know specifically that what you want is to have more alertness during your like 2 p.m. slump. Right. That's a specific problem. You can test things out. And for me, like exercise is not what does that. Well, not regular exercises. There's a breathing exercise I could do for like 10 to 15 minutes in the morning that strangely enough gives me a lot more alertness throughout my day. So I don't feel like I need to take a nap in the middle of the day. Um, and so it's, it's, it's that thing, like know what you want, specifically what results you're looking for and experiment till you find those. And once you find those, it's not the big battle everyone thinks it is because um, there are days I don't do my breathing exercises and I feel the difference. So like even when you find the right habit that's making a result in your life, it's actually easy to keep because when you don't do it, it's reinforcing. You're like, wow, this feels awful. <laughs> Tomorrow I should remember to do those, yeah. um, those exercises or I feel tired right now. Um, it's later than I usually do it, but I'm going to take a break and do those so I can be a little bit more alert. I see from going through your social media accounts that you're big on family. Oh, yes. How do you organize your life to help keep family first in your life? You know, that really depends on your situation. I talk to people in a number of situations where, um, you know, fathers who are full-time providers, um, trying to make time for the kids, fathers who have found a little bit of flexibility in a mostly full-time uh, job or a full-time or mostly full-time job um, by cutting out the commute or other things. Um, and then, you know, full-time stay-at-home dads. And uh, that's it's just something you have to experiment with what works for you. And my advice, again, is uh, make the big life changes by building up to it with small life changes. So um, one of the earliest uh, discussions I had with my wife was when our our first child was born, and she was kind of taking care of all the responsibilities. And I thought she wanted to, and she she kind of seemed to just do it. So I let her. And then at one point, she's like, "I'm exhausted. Could you just do bath time uh, with our son?" And I did that for you know half an hour. We just played. It was really fun. Um, every you know every day, I tried to come up with. Uh, you know, some new game to play with our kid, whether it was just like making funny sounds by uh, screechy sounds by wiping a wet finger on the plastic or whether it's pouring water in front of him and watch him try and catch it uh, in his hands. Um, you know, it, it was it was very enjoyable, but it, that was the beginning of all of our lifestyle design, right? And eventually, you know, bigger and bigger decisions happened when more was needed, right? I moved from uh, a really intense coding job to one that was more family friendly, friendly, smaller commute, shorter hours. Um, and then that wasn't quite enough. And so then I went stay at home dad for a while in Japan. Um, and that was too much. That was like too much craziness. And it didn't work out for our families kind of being remote. Uh, our kids didn't have a lot of opportunity to hang out with other kids. Uh, so we came back. Um, but like all those big things, um, like moving to Japan and being a stay at home dad, they came, they started with a small experiment saying like, Hey, what if I do this? What if I take the kids here? How can I fit more, more time in? Um, and it's just going to be really unique, uh, but start small. Yeah. You know, I, I noticed that a lot of people, they hang on to old things. Uh, it's a habit that we have. <laughs> I say that, Sometimes we have to move on. People, places, and things get heavy. And if mm -hmm. things like that get heavy, we have to find new ways to begin. So how important is it 
to let go of negative minded people that hold you down and, you know, make it hard for you to make your life a good life. Yeah. Um, I mean, generally, I flip things around a little bit more towards the positive, i.e. it's more important to make sure that you're having the right kind of positive people in your life um, that will have a bigger impact on you than making sh for for most people. I, I think there are extreme circumstances for most people than cutting out the negative. Right. Um, and if you are trying to fill your life full of positive influences, it will become more and more obvious that you know if there is a negative influence either a negative thing that you're doing that's really dragging you down or a, a negative relationship in your life that that you don't seem to be able to turn around or that somebody else doesn't seem interested in turning around um you know then that comes out in sharp relief and if you've been focusing on bringing positive influences into your life you don't have to like cut that relationship out and then have nothing, right? You can just say, oh, well, I'd rather spend my time with these, you know, these positive relationships or these positive activities. Um, and so I guess I can spend less time on this thing that's bringing me down. So, so I think that happens eventually. I, th I think um, that is critical, right? Like if, if you want to make more time for good stuff in your day, you're going to have to cut down on the bad stuff. Uh, and I find just personally that happens more naturally by just focusing on, you know, bringing more positive relationships into my life. Um, and for me, like bring that more specifically, that looks like um, reconnecting with old friends, uh, people who are creative, doing interesting things that make me think like, oh, yeah, I uh, studied creative writing, but I haven't written anything since college. And here's one of my friends who's kept up with writing. Maybe I'll keep in touch with them and they'll bring out that creative spark in my life. Um, and then it, when that happens, you know, I'll have to figure out what it is that I don't have time for anymore. I like that outlook, you know, bringing positive before the negative is always good. So how often should we step back and observe and measure our progress that we've made in our life change? Yeah, that gets on, on the reflection piece. Um, and that's, I mean, that is absolutely critical, uh, I think, to any life change. And for me, I think the answer of you will have to experiment with this again yourself. But what has worked for me over lots of experiments uh, is uh, trying to reflect a little bit each day, but like very low fidelity, like um, a couple bullet points of things I might have learned today or might think about doing differently. Um, then in a week, I might do... Uh, you know, a more extensive like journal, um, thinking about like, what, what are the key lessons, takeaways, I might do so a little bit more planning, my goals are generally on weekly levels, um, rather than daily levels, um, where I'm thinking about um, what am I going to do differently this week. Um, and then but but in terms of like actually evaluating change, I mean, most significant changes happen over a period of time. Um, and this is actually kind of a, a frontier I haven't fully developed, but, you know, doing quarterly half year or year, uh, year reflections, um, or I, I don't have an organized version of doing them. I usually do have some kind of long term check in with my wife that kind of happens more organically about like, how are we doing with our lives and what's our next step. Um, but, you know, that might be where you actually see the difference. So like day to day. Um, you'll just have a few ideas week to week. You might change some behaviors, um, but it's going to be usually on the scale of months that you're going to start or longer that you're going to see significant results if you're trying to make a major life change. With the onset of COVID-19, we all get stuck inside a little bit more. I find myself sitting at the computer a little bit more. How yeah. do we organize our time to be more productive with our life in this bubble of COVID-19 right now? Yeah, there are so many things with that. Uh, I think you you highlighted that we spend more time sitting at a screen and inside. Um, and, and that's something that's good to be aware of. And if you uh, really want to uh, de-stress and relax, uh, one of the best things we can do these days is get outside and get away from the screen. 
uh, period of time without screen time before bed will help you sleep better, right? Like just physically help you sleep better. Um, but there's also so many distractions, uh, so much crazy negative media. Um, getting out into the real world is sometimes helpful to realize, like, although the news is bombarding you constantly and and so people and it filters through your social media and everything uh constantly bombarding you with everything that's going wrong and everything that's crazy it's not that those things aren't crazy but if you step outside your door and look around and talk to the people around you um in most areas most of the time life is actually pretty sane and normal and most people are decent human beings even if they disagree with you or voted for someone else or you know have a different position on whatever topic um You'd, you'd be surprised. Uh, I know there's uh, one influencer, uh, Dave Rubin, who does a completely unplugged August or something like that. Um, and he, he keeps talking about how that's the, he has, just has a completely different experience unplugged from social media in the real world versus social media. And so, um, yeah, I mean, unplugging is one of those things that, that you can do absolutely to, to better use your time. Um, but uh, a whole different subject would be, you know, how do, how do you most effectively use the screen time that you have? Along the lines of COVID-19 and being stuck inside, we all need a little help from each other once in a while. I noticed that you have this coaching and a system to help people with their day-to-day -day lives. Can we mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so uh, the, the thing I focus on again is building up to life change. And that framework would be the, um, getting clarity on what it is you, you want and not like superficial clarity. So someone asked me the other day, all right, so like when you have a conversation with your wife about priorities and you're prioritizing career or family, um, you know, how do you have that conversation? What do you look, what does that look like? And, and my response is basically, Career and family are terrible priorities because they're very unclear. What is it about your career that you want? Is it is it the making more money, saving more money? Is it the social environment? Is it mastering a craft? Is it, you know, there's all sorts of things a career can be. And those are the things that you want to start prioritizing. Um, and then you want to go deeper than that. Like, why does mastering a craft matter to you? Or um, why is it so important that you save up? What are you saving for? Um, you know, is there a different way, for instance, you know, sometimes that's saving up by making more, sometimes you can save by spending less, and you can start diving into those things. So clarity is the first phase of that. A second phase would be um, building competence, building uh, capacity to to make change. And so that's making the small 10 minute changes, the tweaks here and there. Um, and if you feel like you're not using your time well, uh, again, rather than trying to structure all your time or worry about like what to cut out, um, just experiment with doing 10 minutes of something that deeply aligns with your values, what you, what you really want, um, that you find really fulfilling. Just like add 10 minutes more of that a day. And then you, there will be so many insights that come from doing that, uh, running experiments, seeing what works, uh, and then slowly scaling that up over time. And then what will happen after the, the building capacity is you'll, you'll start to realize these are things that work for me. These are things that don't. You'll start to be able to see how some of these small steps can add up to something bigger. Um, you know, in the case of um, going to Japan, for example, you know, there's a long time where uh, what we're doing there is my wife was running a school in Japan. Um, and there's a, a long period where she was volunteering with the program that eventually turned into that school. Um, and so she had been preparing, um, you know, in small steps, doing small things regularly to make this big thing happen. And then at a certain point, we realized like, all right, you could be running the school in Japan, we could try living, living there. And then you start having to make plans about like, all right, so, so what are the steps we have to take, we have to um, sell everything that we can't put in storage, we have to, you know, figure out what to do with our car, we have to um, make sure that, you know, our costs are covered. Um, and so that's the planning phase. The fourth phase is um, capping the downside, or mitigating the risk. So that's just making sure when you make a big change, 
that um, you know what the risks are and you're providing for them. So uh, in Japan, for example, uh, we knew we'd, it would be great to be in Japan, but we want to make sure we didn't go into debt. So we had some arrangement. We had like room, board, plus a stipend uh, covering everything. So there's, and we had insurance and whatnot. So there, there was no way we were going to go in debt, um, even though uh, due to the nature of the circumstances, it wasn't like a high earning uh, potential. Um, it was extremely low risk. Um, and then the fifth thing, comes back to the reflecting and iterating, right? If you want to uh, improve your time, you um, you you spend some time reflecting on what you tried and how that went and what you want to do differently next time. Uh, and those are cycles that can play out over years, like the Japan thing that can play out over a day when you think about like, what's the hard thing you're going to do today um, that feels risky to you? How can you take the risk out of that hard conversation with your coworker or employer or customer or whatever? Um, and then at the end of the day, you can reflect like, what did I learn? You know, did that, uh, did that, negotiation tactic work did that um you know productivity ritual to 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 visualize what i was going to do do that day did that make me more productive or did it not so um that's the framework all right so my listeners love to improve themselves how can they get a hold of you connect and get involved with what you're doing yeah sure so that is easier habits kind of everywhere easier habits on twitter uh, my channel is Easier Habits on YouTube. And of course, there's easierhabits.com. You can go to my website, uh, check out my coaching. And then also I do uh, a blog right now that, that'll give you show notes or details that don't come up uh, in things that uh, I have, a, like my YouTube video, I might discuss a topic like screen time we've talked about or making life decisions with your partner. Um, and then my blog will kind of go into depth in little areas that I didn't really have time to cover in the video. So you can check that out on easierhabits.com. Okay, Alec, we thank you for being with us today here on Dead America. All of our links for this show will be in the show notes. You have a Thank you very day. much, Ed. You too. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.